Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The love of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. The means of salvation is set by the Gospel. That Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Christ came because we are going to die. And we're going to die because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I have a fruit today that is free. Unlike the fruits and vegetables that are before us, by price. There is a fruit of God by the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Even though the Bible speaks about nine fruits, yet of the Holy Spirit there are one fruit. And that fruit comes by your belief that Jesus Christ can save you of your sins. When somebody believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, they get God's Holy Spirit that indwells in them. And when you get the true Holy Spirit of God, you get free fruit. Free fruit that lasts for all eternity that will never be thrown out, that will never perish, that will never be devoured, and the fruit of the Spirit is by Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus speaking. And the fruit of the Spirit is what man desires. And man desires it by his own ways. And the world offers you artificial fruit. The world will offer you artificial love. And yet the Bible says God is love. And without God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know what love is. When we read off that the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave. The true love of God is sacrificial love. It is for the merit of others and not yourself. When Jesus Christ suffered and died upon that cross, He gained a bunch of sinners, which can do Him no good. But give God the give God the Father in the praise in the praise and honor only by His Son. 
He said, we're not good enough because the Bible says there is none good. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All righteousness must be set upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. And then when you do that, you will get the true love of God. Upon your acceptance of Jesus Christ as your sin offering, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, you have already received the love of God. Reject Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're getting no love of God. And when you hear someone say that God lo hates the sin but loves the sinner, that's a lie. Because the sinner has rejected Jesus Christ, his son, for your offering, and there will be no love because the love of God is shed abroad at Calvary for lost souls. In order to continue in the love of God, you've got to receive Jesus Christ. Because love is the first fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the love of God, John 3, 16, is Jesus Christ. So if your faith is in Allah, or Mary, or Pope, or anything else, there is no love of God. God will not love you if you reject Jesus Christ. And what person does not want the merit of love? We all seek some kind of love. And God has said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. A holy, undefiled, sinless love is reaching out to you today by Jesus Christ. It's not the kind of love that the world gives of rock and roll. It's not the kind of love that what can I get from you? It's the love of God already shed abroad by His Son, Jesus Christ. It's a holy, righteous love that God is reaching down for you. The second fruit is joy. Oh, the joy that we see. The time of Christmas, joy. Being merry. And yet God has a pure, holy, as He has love, He has a pure, holy joy that He's offering to you, again, by Jesus Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is by Jesus Christ. It is minus nothing but Jesus Christ alone. It is nothing that you can do. It is nothing that you can buy. It is nothing that you can give but the gift of Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23 Now you can have a joy of a bundle of a baby until that baby does you harm one day. Until that baby rejects and forsakes you. And maybe calls you every name under the sin that's not proper. Then that joy is gone. Maybe the joy will be get that job you want. And get unhealthy conditions of your body. See, the Bible says that the world's joy is temporal. It may even be at a cost. Your joy may be the cost of a six-pack, or a shot, or something that you inhale. And then you've got to go back and buy more. And yet the love and joy of the fruit of the Spirit is free. There's always a refill on the prescription of God's love and God's joy. And you don't need a doctor to refill it. You don't need a pharmacist. You turn to the one that you have believed that washed away your sins. And you confess your sins. For he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And
and that love and that joy can be refilled in your life. Even in times of trouble and despair. God knows that the human being is searching for love. He's searching for joy. And He will give you that gift, that fruit, by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, which died for our sins. No Jesus, no love. No Jesus, no joy. It's that simple. Your father, Satan, does not want you to have joy. He'll give you an imitation joy that you think you have joy. You don't have joy. Bowing down before the porcelain throne is not joy. In the early morning hours after a good party night, that's not joy. Running out of money to continue to buy your joy is not joy. And yet God has something that is eternal. The fruit of the Spirit will receive from the time that you are saved and will last for all eternity. Now, I'm not saying as a Christian that your life is always going to be joyful. You will get trials and tribulations, but in those trials and tribulations, you can have joy. And you can know that God loves you through Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ, there is no joy and there's no love. Peace. Peace is the third fruit of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We all want that peace. Some people cross their legs and trip out. Some people pass a stogie around. Some people say, fill her up. Some people say, let's go to a hotel room. There's all means of the world to seek after peace, but there's one peace of God. And again, the peace of God comes by the finished work of Jesus Christ. We want peace of the nations. Religions want peace of the world. And you're not going to get that peace without God and His Son, Jesus Christ. America will not lie in peace because she has rejected Jesus Christ. And God in Revelation 19 will come back on a horse and stomp on your red, white, and blue because you have stomped on Jesus. You lift up and pride the red, white, and blue, but you won't open up the black book. You can't have peace in America without having the book. There is no peace in America without Jesus Christ, and you have totally rejected Jesus. The Bible says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Regret and rejoice is through Jesus Christ. Peace is by the shed blood of Jesus being tormented and being beaten because we were the sinners. There is no peace saith the Lord to the wicked. You cannot be living in your sin and enjoying your sin and then say you're going to have peace. That violates the Bible. Now your American professors may teach otherwise, but get the hell with them. And to the glory of the Word of God that says to us that God's peace is given to us by God's Son. And again, as a Christian, you will suffer trials and tribulations and trials.
trouble. And yet you'll still have the peace of God. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Try that with the red, white, and blue. Try that with your religion. As you face eternity. Can you truly face death with peace? And the answer is no. Not without Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. The Holy Spirit is the offer of peace. You've got trials and tribulations and troubles in your life. The true peace that you need is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because I guarantee your troubles, your problems are a result of something you've done in your lifetime called sin. And you need to repent of your sin. You need to get right with God. You need to get Jesus as your Savior, as your Lamb, which take away the sin of the world. Now, those trials and tribulations may not go away, but you can have God's peace. And like Jesus Christ, it's a free gift by Jesus Christ. Upon receiving Him as your Savior. Love, joy, and peace. Long-suffering. I'll tell you what God is right now for you rejecters. You fools and you mockers. You religionists, you atheists, you scientists. God is long suffering for you right now today. The Bible says God is not willing that any should suffer. The long desire of Jesus Christ is to call his bride away right now today. Jesus Christ, who is seated at the right hand of the Father right now, wants his bride. And the rapture has not happened right now because God wants you to repent and get right. But that long suffering will not last forever. The long suffering of God may end any minute now. Maybe any second. The long suffering for a Christian is for us having to wait for the rapture while you reject Christ after time, after time, after time. And when God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel, you say, they ain't listening, God. Just call us home, will you, God? And oh, no, no, they're lost. They still need to hear. Still got to give them an opportunity like I gave you an opportunity. And the long suffering for a Christian is to put up with all the nonsense of the world. You may not like the preaching of the Bible that you hear this Saturday morning, but I am sick and tired of your junky music I gotta listen to. I'm sick and tired of your filthy mouth around my family. I'm sick and tired of your half dressed women. As much as the Word of God offends you, you offend us. And that long suffering. As God is long suffering for you to repent and get right. You woke up this morning to hear the Word of God and get the opportunity to be saved. That's the long suffering God. Some people never woke up this morning. Some people are now dead. The long suffering of God is for them has ended. But you are alive and hear the word of God, the gospel that Jesus died for your sins. 
according to the scripture, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scripture, what must you do to get right before God? What must you do that God will be pleased? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And not only saved, but you get the, you get the love of God, you get the joy of God, you get the peace of God, and the long-suffering of God. And I'm not done. Then your alcohol cannot do what God does. Your alcohol costs you money, and then you got to throw it up, and then you may wake up with the most ugliest chick ever. And not know she's going to carry your baby. The unknowns, the unknowns, the price, the being sick. And yet, but the assurity of the Bible through God, Jesus Christ, the fruit that we can get is wonderful and everlasting. Since I've been saved, 1987, in the month of April, I have had trials and tribulations, and I have had the love, the joy, and the peace, and the long-suffering of God. And there's no way to explain. And yet, I can explain the salvation grace is so wonderful by Jesus. The Bible says another fruit of the Spirit is that you may know that you have eternal life. These things are written that you may know you have eternal life. Gentleness. Gentleness.
God has been gentle to me because he has laid the iniquity upon his son, Jesus Christ, instead of me. That's gentle. Because if God were to lay my sins on my butt, like he did upon Jesus, it would not be gentle. Yet the long-suffering, the love, the peace of God, the joy of God, the gentleness of God, I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I will not ever suffer the wrath of God. Temperance. Uh, goodness. Goodness. I am good. Preacher, I'm a good person. The Bible says there is none good. What do you do with that? You're not good. You got a filthy and wicked heart. Your imaginations are not pure. You're before God. What we may see on the outside, God sees on the inside. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the good and the evil. Wait a minute, I misquote that verse. Sorry. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. We are prone to do more evil than we are to do good. It is in our nature, thanks to Adam, to sin. And the goodness of God is not to suffer the wrath of God, hell, by the finished work of His Son, Jesus Christ. You want God to be good to you? You've got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There's only one man you're to turn to with your sins. One man for you to confess your sins to. And that's the man Christ Jesus. The mediator between God and man. Don't you go to another sinner. You go to Jesus Christ and Jesus, I am a sinner. I have failed you. I am unpure in the sight of God. And yet you suffered and died that I may have eternal life. Jesus, I want that eternal life. I want to be washed from my sins. And you watch the goodness of God come down into your heart. And you want to shout, Hallelujah! What can the world give to you that's good? What can the world give to you that's free and good? What can the world offer that's free, that's good, and lasts forever? That doesn't need a guarantee or a warranty. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Let me read to you, let me go to Psalms. 7-11. You turn there. Psalm 7-11. That's a good passage to remember. Psalm 7-11. Think of that Hindu behind the counter. 7-11. I didn't say that. I did too. Psalm 7-11. God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. You're not going to get the goodness of God if God is angry with you. It's impossible. And yet John the Baptist said that he that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You have no Jesus, you have no goodness. 
you will and are John chapter 3 under the wrath and condemnation of God. The goodness and love and mercy and grace of, of God is Jesus Christ. The long suffering is He does not want you to go to hell. Now God will not put you in hell. You go there by your own choice. When you choose to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, you put yourself into hell. You just make God the judge and the sentencer of that sentence that you want. And you want to go to hell because you don't want God's way. You even tell your friends, go to hell. And we are here that you may not go to hell.
This doesn't sound right, but I'm humble. And I'm not boasting in my humbleness. Because the meekness is when I say before God, the righteousness that I need to get to God is Jesus Christ and not mine. Because I have no righteousness. I have nothing to boast about of my own person. Because I am a wicked, vile sinner. I'm just washed in the blood of Jesus. The difference between you and me, I'm washed. You're not. But you can be. And you can be made clean. Isaiah 1.18, you can be as red as scarlet and be white as snow. And then the meekness of God, the Spirit, is to realize you are not as important as you think you are. It all rests upon Jesus. There is nothing I've done to get me to heaven. It's all Jesus. There is nothing I have done to tell you about God and the gospel. It's Jesus. Sometimes his body of flesh says, don't go to him. And Jesus says, go to him. Tell them. They need to repent and get right. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And yet God has given you a choice. Choose you this day. Choose life or choose death. And temperance. Temperance is like temperature. Temperature. The Holy Spirit will help you not lose your temper. But when you get in the flesh, oh boy, you can lose it. See, God has offered to man nine fruits. And yet, it comes as one fruit. And the tree is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes by your belief on the finished work of Jesus Christ. The moment you believe on Jesus Christ, you get the indwelling Holy Spirit. And when you get the indwelling Holy Spirit, you get the fruit. No Jesus, no fruit. No Jesus, no access to the Father. God, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And I haven't preached about money. I haven't preached about being good. I haven't preached about anything that you are to do but believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. This fruit I offer to you by God is free of charge. And it's eternal, which means it never goes away. It is never consumed. It is never wasted. And you can be filled of the fruit of the Spirit day by day, hour by hour. And who would think, who would think that any of these vendors here would sell you bad fruit? That would be bad for them to sell you bad fruit. And yet God, in His holiness, will never give you bad fruit. Every time you get the love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, meekness, every time you reach for that fruit, each one is good and sweeter than it was before. And it will not cost you anything. And you don't have to go to Daytona Beach to get it. It can 
be brought anywhere. And it does not need refrigeration. It needs for you to believe on Jesus Christ and get in the book and live by faith. And then faith was another fruit that's been given to you by Jesus Christ. See, when we preach Jesus as the Savior, as the one that will get you out of hell, it is not just getting out of hell, my friend. God has so much more to offer you. People say, preach love. I've been all the time. It's just not the love you want. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It says here that love is the first fruit. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the love of God. You get no more fruit until you believe in the love of God. The love of God is Jesus. And then it says, joy. Joy will shine in your heart when you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then the next fruit is peace. The peace of God that you're not going to hell because Jesus saved you. You do not have to fear death no longer. When you realize that Jesus has saved your soul, that you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death and you will fear no evil. That's peace. Long suffering. You will realize that God has been reaching out to you. God has been reaching out to you. God has been reaching out to you for you to trust His Son. And you realize that moment when you have believed on Jesus. How long God has waited for you to come. How merciful God has been that He has not called His, his bride away. He has not given you doubt. But He has given you the opportunity to believe on Jesus. That the loving, merciful God is long-suffering. The gentleness of God. That He will allow you in His presence. That God will receive you into His family. That He will become your Father and you become His child. The gentleness of God by Jesus Christ. Death is coming. You will die. When? I have no idea. And this is not a message to be rejected. And this is not a message to be, I'll do it tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow may be your eternity and what you choose now. Faith. The Holy Spirit will give you the faith and offer you the faith to believe on Jesus today. If your conscience is working right now at the preaching, if you got that fear in your heart right now, you want the preaching to shut up. You don't want to hear it any longer. That may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now. You better do something, buddy. That may be God's Holy Spirit is, I'm trying to get to you. You need to listen. Thank you, I appreciate it. 
Because once you die, it's too late. Do not die in your sins. Because if you die in your sins, you will burn in your sins. If you die in the Lord, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Time is short. Death will come to your door. And sometimes he doesn't even knock. Sometimes, sometimes death is instant and quick and unheeding. Don't think on your deathbed, you're, oh, that's when I'll believe on Jesus. You may not know when you're deathbed. You know, with this weekend, the bars are selling alcohol like crazy. The stores are selling that booze like crazy. You may have one person intoxicated end your entire life forever. You don't know when death is coming. But you can know today that your name is put in the land's book of life. You can know today that when you die, you will enter into glory. You can know that by Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, you can know that you can go to God the Father today. Today. You can come to Daytona to buy fruit and walk away with the fruit of the Spirit for all eternity. Or you can come to Daytona to the farmer's market and you can wake up in hell one day and say, I wish I had listened to that man. I wish I had listened to the Word of God. I am sure one thing, you're going to die. I am sure of another thing. If you were to believe on Jesus Christ before you die, you will have eternal life. I am sure that a majority of you are not going to heaven. I am sure that some of you who are not going to heaven think you're going to heaven. How would you like to hear what Jesus has to say to you out of Matthew 7? I'm going to heaven. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. How would you like to have Jesus say that to you? That should be people who think they're going to heaven without Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible, who died upon Calvary's cross according to the Scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the Jesus. The Beloved of God, the Son of God, who is God. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Because the wages of sin is death. You need to get to God, which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. These things have I written unto you, that you may know you have eternal life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yet the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's 
such a hopeful message that we preach it every week. We try every day. See, we don't have a Jesus week. We have Jesus daily. With Jesus, you don't need alcohol. You don't need drugs. You don't need the world. The blessed hope of God is Jesus Christ. Salvation is no other. For there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. God says must, but He's given you a free will. Don't think God will let you into heaven just because He'll let you into heaven. That's a lie. You are not good enough and you will never be good enough. And if everybody gets to your heaven, I don't want your heaven. You can take that heaven that lets everybody into it and you can stuff it. Because that heaven will be no different than this planet Earth. I want a sinless, righteous heaven by Jesus Christ. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. I am cleansed by Jesus Christ. And you can be too. Today, you can have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and know where you're going. You can know today you're saved. Try that with your religion. Go to Papa John in Italy and go ask him. Whatever his name is this week. Yet I have access to Jesus Christ, to the Holy Father, and that's not the one in Italy. I have access to God Almighty. I'm His child. I'm His son. And you can be a child of God too. By Jesus Christ. There's no other way to God but Jesus. And he's got to be the biblical Jesus, because the Bible warns us that there's another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And just because you're below the Bible belt, don't think that Christian radio is Christ. Christless. Good morning, friend. Good morning. How are you, my friend? Hey. How's everything?